If you're a member of the clergy, you know you're getting a bit long in the tooth when you receive a letter from the bishop uh, inviting you to go on uh, a course or sort of retread for clergy who've been in ministry for over 20 years. Uh, and uh, I received such an invitation two years ago and uh, I, I'd been um, told it was coming and it was uh, a course entitled Refreshing Ministry. As I say, a kind of retread for clergy of a certain age. And one of the sessions, these things are always a bit like the curate's egg, you know, good, good in parts. And one of the good sessions that I found most helpful was led by a nun who got those of us in her group to engage in an observation exercise. And she did this by handing out uh, a picture of an elderly man sitting on some front steps in front of a doorway. And a young woman stood to his right, looking down towards him, and there was a child standing in front, facing both the uh, elderly man and the woman. And the nun asked us to tell her what we thought was happening in that picture. And of course we all came up with different responses, such as the child and woman are caring for the old man. I think I said something like, the child is listening to him telling a story while the mother watches. All sorts of stories came up until the nun finally pointed out to us what was actually happening um, in the picture. She said, the elderly man and the young woman are listening to the child telling them something. And she went on to explain that if we looked closely enough, and I confess I'm not an expert on anything, I'm certainly not an expert on art, she said all the signs were there if you looked closely. And the nun then concluded our group session by saying to us, what I guess should be obvious to us all, that communication is happening all the time. We just have to, to pay very careful attention to the signs. We must be watchful, she said, watchful and alert like Sherlock Holmes and noticing things that in daily life we often uh, overlook. And the Christian life is similar as we seek to grow in both faith and to grow the kingdom of God here on earth. That's our charge, our commission. And whether it be spiritual, emotional or intellectual growth, surely the key to success in any endeavour is the willingness uh, to listen, developing our ability to listen. We don't get all that far in life if we don't listen. And it's about listening, surely, to the right voices, trying to distinguish the right voices from the wrong ones. And in our Gospel reading from St Matthew, Jesus warns us against listening to false teaching. But what does false teaching look like? Well, says Jesus, look at the evidence. For by their fruits ye shall know them. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And Jesus is very practical here and gives us an example. I don't know, uh, some of you may be uh, experts on identifying trees. Um, and you can tell from a distance uh, by the shape or closer up by the leaves or even by the bark if the tree is not in leaf. You can tell what kind of tree it is. But a lot of us, myself included, I struggle sometimes, don't have that, that knowledge. Is it our, our boreal list? Is that the word? Yes. Yes. 
But even the most ignorant of us, when it comes to trees, can at least surely tell a tree when it's fruiting and looking at the fruit. So what does evil look like? Remember the old spaghetti westerns? Who enjoyed watching the old uh, Wild West movies? The good ones with um, you know, Lee Van Cleef and Clint Eastwood. Uh, and even before that, what colour was the horse of the bad guy, always? It was black, yes. And the good guy wore uh, rode a, a white horse, didn't he? And did you ever notice the bad guys tended to dress in dark clothes? And the good guys didn't. It was pretty easy to distinguish uh, the good from the bad. And if you look at, uh, I don't know, Lord of the Rings, uh, J.R. Tolkien's novel, or uh, the, um, the Harry Potter series, uh, it, it's pretty easy to, to recognise straight away, you know, if your name is Voldemort, <laughs> you're not going to be a good guy, are you? So in, in films and in literature, distinguishing the good from the bad um, is relatively easy, most times, or very often. But in real life, in real life, it's sometimes difficult to see what is true from what is false. And we're living in a country where, in a world indeed, where there's a lot of what we've learnt to call um, fake news or alternative facts. I don't know if we can blame Trump for those phrases. I mean, certainly fake news and alternative facts have been around a long time, but be perhaps because of the, the digital age in which we now live, we're more conscious uh, than we were before. And certainly we've been bombarded with a lot of fake news during this coronavirus crisis, and a lot of scams have been going on. As the nun on my residential course pointed out, Communication is happening all the time and we can sometimes feel rather confused and overwhelmed by what we see and what we hear. The important question for us as disciples of Jesus Christ is this. What are we communicating to others? What are we communicating to those around us? by the way you and I are living our lives. When Jesus says, you shall know them by their fruits, he's referring not only to good and bad prophets and good and bad teachers, but to his followers as well. Does the way that we live our lives, the way in which we treat other people really show that the Spirit of Jesus dwells within us. Can someone, rather like uh, looking uh, at a tree, can someone look at my life and yours and say, I know what you are? <laughs> can people see that we are Christians because of the fruit, the good fruit? That we produce. And if you need a precise definition of good fruit, then go to chapter 5, St Paul's letter to the Galatians. For the fruits of the Spirit are, do you know how many of them are? Nine. And however long I'm wretched God's work, I will keep banging on about the fruits of the Spirit, because it is so, so important. St Paul writes, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those, my friends, are the hallmarks 
of a true Christian.